My name is Caitlin Bassett, and I am the Camlets Youth Facilitator with the Invasive Species Council of BC. Thanks to everyone tonight for joining us for the second workshop in the Creative by Nature series, The Art of Painting Botanicals. If you missed our session, The Art of Botanical Illustration, you can view the recording on our Facebook page, our YouTube account, or on our website at bcinvasives.ca. This workshop is being presented by Isabel Gassor, who is the project manager with the Invasive Species Council of Metro Vancouver, and she is also a freelance artist on the side. As you know, invasive species are a serious issue worldwide, and it is vital to engage and support all British Columbians in taking action. Art is a really great way to raise awareness about invasive species and the importance of protecting biodiversity. During tonight's lesson, you will learn how to draw and paint yellow flag iris, an invasive species in British Columbia. We also welcome you to follow along with your own painting supplies. Uh, Isabel will be using watercolor paints, but you are more than welcome to use any medium that you choose. So I hope you all had a chance to sign in early and get any technical glitches worked out. If you are experiencing any technical difficulties, you can write a note in the chat box and ISCBC technical support will send you a private chat to help you out. Now, if you have any questions throughout the workshop, please feel free to pop them into the Q&A section. So you can do that by clicking on the Q&A tab at the bottom of the window and the host will answer any non-speaker related questions in the chat. Questions for Isabel will be answered throughout the workshop. So have a bit of time at the end to answer any unanswered questions. And in the chance that we run out of time, any unanswered questions will be sent out by email. So to begin, we'd like to find out who is here and where you are all from. So if you haven't already, if you could please type your name, where you're from, and what your areas of interest are in the chat box, and then we close while I'm introducing Isabel. So at this point, I'm pleased to give a warm welcome and introduction to Isabel, who is presenting this workshop. Isabel started her career journey in the environmental field in 2013, but her passion for the outdoors, plants, wildlife, and art started long before then. She holds a diploma of technology in fish, wildlife, and recreation from T, and a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science from Royal Roads University. She first started creating scientific drawings of plants in, uh, of plants in school when learning how to identify different species. She has been working for the Invasive Species Council of Metro Vancouver since 2015, started integrating her art into the outreach and education materials whenever possible. So Isabel, before we get started, we just want to launch a quick poll to see what types of artistic mediums our participants like to use most. So Isabel, do you have a favorite medium that you like to use? I know you're using colors tonight, but is that typically your preferred medium? Yeah, so I like using watercolors the most. Um, I've in the last couple of years just recently re-picked re it up from it's been a year since I painted and um, I originally was an acrylic paint user, but now I think I'm a watercolor person. <laughs> awesome, that's great. Uh, myself, I like I really enjoy using acrylics. I've done a bit of watercolor art, but it's I find it really difficult to use just because you have to really understand the use of white space, <laughs> which really isn't my my skill set. But uh, I love creating art and just being in nature and nature journaling, all those sorts of things I find really interesting. So I see a bunch of participants are starting to enter the poll, which is great. So, so far we've got acrylic and watercolors are in the lead. And also there's an option there saying that you love them all, which is great because art is definitely very, very diverse. And many of us like to use different mediums. Isabel, did you start um, with using like, watercolors or like when you were a kid what was your favorite medium when I was a kid I loved like when I was really young markers were like the thing and then I realized that I actually like pencil crayons and then I went from pencil crayons to watercolor but then I was I just couldn't make good watercolor art and then I kind of for a few years just liked acrylic paints 
and just use that. And then now I'm back to watercolor and I've, I've decided to like deter, I was determined to like learn how to use them properly. And yeah, now I love it the most. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, one of the things I enjoyed was using the watercolor pencils, the non-toxic ones, because you can also use them for face painting. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, so we've got the results up. And wow, we've got lots of new artists on tonight, which is great. Uh, this is the perfect workshop to get you started. And if you, again, like mentioned, if you haven't seen uh, the first workshop series, you can view it um, on our Facebook page and on our website and on YouTube. And followed by um, having lots of new artists, we have lots of, again, like I mentioned, you like acrylic and watercolor. So that's awesome. Thanks, everyone, for, for entering in the pool. Okay, so Isabel, I will pass things over to you to start your exciting workshop and I hope everyone enjoys. Great, thank you. Thanks everyone for joining us today and we are going to be doing a drawing of yellow flag iris to begin with and then once we kind of get the concept of the shape of the plant we're going to go into um, I'm going to be watercolor painting, but feel free to follow along with the coloring with whatever medium you have and uh, feel free to ask questions along like if you're stuck at a certain area and you need tips on how to um, make your proportions better or anything like that. Just shoot the questions along and I'll try to answer them as best as I can um, as I go along. So I guess, uh, yeah, I'm just looking at the comments right now. We have a good variety of people here and, and I'm really excited to share this lesson with you guys. So I'm just gonna turn on my camera here for my page and then we will start. So I think we can switch to that. Yeah, okay, there's my hand, perfect. So to begin, I'll show you guys a picture that I drew of and painted of yellow flag iris just to kind of learn about the shape of it. And as you can see, it's actually one of the more complicated flowers to draw and paint. So the fact that you guys are all here willing to learn this is awesome. Um, it has a lot of different dimensions and um, different styles of petals. So if, you, if you'll be able to draw this today, you will be able to learn to draw many other flowers. So you start at the hardest plant and then you can, everything else is easy after that. So this is a yellow flag iris and yes, it is invasive to BC. And as you can see, there's all these petals that kind of go upwards and these are called standards and there's three of them. There's also three petals that fall downward and they're called falls. And so these are larger and more distinct, but as you can see, like together, they kind of make the shape of the flower. So um, these round bits here with a darker color, these are actually called signal patches and they are to attract uh, insects and pollinators to pollinate. So those are kind of like the landing pads for them. So I thought that was kind of a cool fact to share about um, the design of this plant that nature designed. Um, the leaves of this plant are kind of almost sword-like. They have very um, pointy tips and then they broaden at the, uh, at the base. And so how they connect to the stem, you could see that there's um, kind of these nodes and the leaves kind of come from the po points whenever there's a node. So you'll see that and when we draw it, that the leaves, where they come from, that's kind of a good point to know um, where they originate. And then, yeah, we'll go over shading, like using the colors to shade to kind of make it more dimensional. And um, we'll also go with, uh, I'll talk a little bit about proportions because I think that's one of the things people have the biggest um, problem when they are drawing is proportions. So you could have like wobbly lines and Maybe it might not be the best, but if your proportions are right, then you, the plant will, will look more like itself. So that's kind of one of the biggest things is proportion and shape. So
So I guess now that I've kind of done a quick intro to the plant and you kind of have an idea of what you're going to be drawing, if anyone has any questions, let me know. And if not, I'm going to start um, doing the drawing. So we'll start with the drawing and then um, after the drawing, we'll do the painting. So to get your proportions right, I think the best thing to do to start is kind of get an idea of where is everything going to go. So kind of create a map. Um, so what I do is the leaf shapes of the way they fall. I'll kind of show you this again. Let me bring this back. These leaves here, I know you, you might not be able to see it, but I can. There's almost like a heart shape here. So keep that in mind, this like heart shape. So we're gonna draw that. And then we're gonna use that as a guide to keep our falls, which are the lower petals, in that um, guideline. So that's the first step. So just draw any shape, leave a good amount of space above it because we will be drawing the um, standards, which are the um, petals that point upwards. So leave some space there. And then don't make it too big as well because I wanna also draw the stem. I'll be drawing the stem here and um, a few leaves, like maybe a couple leaves. So let's map it out. Just draw a rough part, kind of with like almost a rounded bottom like this and do it really lightly because you'll be erasing this later. And then draw where the stem's kind of gonna go. Okay very rough and let me know if the if you can see this or if you're having trouble seeing I'm drawing really lightly I can try to lower or increase my light it might be easier to see okay and then the standards kind of go out so we're just gonna do following lines so these are lines that just show the direction of, of where the petals are gonna go. So yeah, it kind of looks like a lollipop with uh, three hairs on it. I guess that's what it looks like. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the plant. So I like to start with the first, the middle petal. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make the drawings, so I'm gonna use this as a guideline, but the actual leaves and the drawings that I'm gonna use, I'll do darker so that you could tell it apart more. So the shape of this, it kind of goes out like that. And then don't be afraid to put notches and make it kind of irregular like that. So that's gonna be our first petal. And then our second one is gonna come out from slightly behind. So. We're gonna kind of make it a tube kind of shape coming from behind the top of this petal. And then it's just gonna fall and follow, and then follow the shape of the heart. You can go a little bit outside it. Like don't, don't feel the need to stay exactly in that area, but it just gives you a better idea of where to keep the petal. And so you don't kind of make it too straight or too curved. So I'm going to make this like that and then so that's kind of where it's going to go and then um, here I'm going to make it a bit wavy so this is like the side view of the petal so I'm going to make this a bit wavy like that and this is and then if you draw a line like that this kind of shows the uh, petal kind of curling so it's kind of curling on the side, so it gives it a bit more dimension. And then you could also do a little bit on the other side like this. So that's the second petal. And then the third one is the same thing. So we're gonna try to mimic this, but on the other side and try to keep it a little bit, um, just like make it a bit different so it doesn't look exactly symmetrical because Nothing in life is perfectly symmetrical. So that kind of gives it more of a realistic look. 
So you can also play around with like how it's facing, um, how it's facing you. So this one's a little bit more sideways. This one's obviously like front ways because um, we're looking right at it. So this one we're gonna make kind of in the middle of these two, but a little bit more like that. So it just stays the same shape. So I'm gonna make this one come out more here like that. And then I'm going to work there we up. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of a fold. So that's the petal kind of from underneath folding up. Okay, it looks silly right now, but it's a process. Uh, we can do the signal patches that kind of helps give it a bit of shape and Kind of makes it look like something more than it is. So the signal patch shape is almost circular, but it has, a, or like round, but it kind of has a tiny tip, like just a slight one. And then for this one, if the center of the petal, let's say is like here, um, we're gonna put the signal patch like that. And then same with this one, this one, it's going to be covered a little bit by the fold, which is fine. There you go. Okay, so the next step is to draw this middle part. There's the stigma. And it just kind of sits like that. And now we can do the standards. So these ones are gonna be a little bit irregular looking. Um, the tops will be a bit curly and they almost look like tubes. So we're gonna start with this one first. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of like a waviness and then bring it back. And then these actually technically come from behind the stigma here. So um, you're actually gonna, you're drawing it in front of this um, petal, this fall here. This is actually in front. So we're gonna erase that line eventually. I think, I think you guys lost me for a second there. We can I'm hear you sure. now, Isabel. Okay, I'm not sure what happened, sorry. Okay. I just looked up at the screen and it was, there was a circle or something, so. Okay, sorry, um, so I left off, I don't know how much I did without you guys present, but I'm just drawing the, standard here. There we go. And I'm just about to draw the second one. So this one, I'm going to give it a little bit of a different shape. And then it's also going to come from behind of this stigma. And then the middle one is kind of a wild card. <laughs> it's just kind of wobbles. 
almost kind of looks like a really wobbly flame. So draw something that resembles that, whatever you think it is. Okay, so that's the plant, the flower. And I'm gonna do the stem next and then we'll erase all of these light, the guidelines. So the stem, you kind of draw it coming out from under here. I'm just drawing these lines. These kind of show the direction of the shape. And then we're gonna do our first node like that. And then this is just straight. And then depending on how much room you have to the bottom of your page, my page ends here. So I'm just gonna, for the sake of that, I'm just gonna make my last node here. You can always extend a little like that just to have that, but um, I'm just gonna make my note there. And now we could draw the leaves. So I'm gonna make a leaf come out of this node, but slightly behind it. And then this from this node, but slightly in front of the stem. This kind of gives it more dimension. If you make them both come from the same kind of spot, it wouldn't really look, um, wouldn't have as much dimension. So this one's gonna be quite small, the sleeve. I'm just gonna make it go maybe up here. And it's like lance, lancelate kind of shape, meaning it's sword shaped. And then this one, I'm gonna make uh, much bigger and same idea for shape. And then you can draw the lines on it if you want. It's up to you. It depends on like how you're planning to paint it. Um, with watercolor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase some of the lines, but some I like to keep. Um, and then I go over it with fine liner, but if we don't have time, I won't do that. But if we do, I might show you how I go over it with fine liner. Okay, so that's basically the gist of the plant without its details. So it's kind of the shape, it has a little bit of dimension and um, the proportions are pretty good. And so these plants, they can grow to be like one and a half meters tall. The flowers themselves, um, are not proportionate to that. So it's just the stem that um, grows and becomes very, very tall. Okay, so I'm gonna erase these guidelines. It's okay if you kind of erase any of the main lines too, because you, you already know where they are and you can go over that. And then for this part here, just make sure that comes in front of the that fall so that we'll give it the right shape. I kind of erase and draw as I go, but some people like to erase everything and then fix everything, but you can do what, what you feel better. Because once you, once you put watercolor paint on it, uh, you can't really erase the lines. So erase whatever you want right now. And then I'm just fixing Any of the lines I need fixing.
awesome. If anyone's drawing, drawing along, I wonder if there's a way we could like see people's drawings after this, because I'm curious to see how well um, people can follow the instructions or how well my instructions, how easy my instructions are to follow. Isabel, right now we're in the webinar platform, so we're not able to share our screens, but it'd be great um, when we send out a survey possibly to get people to um, maybe send in their art examples. It'd be really cool to see them. Yeah. Or and also or, in a follow-up yeah. lesson, it'd be cool. To okay. Or can they like um, comment? Because I think this is on Facebook Live too. Yeah, they can also post it on Facebook. I'm just going to erase this because I forgot to erase that. So yeah, there we go. That's the yellow flag iris. And then you can kind of look at it and see, okay, are my proportions, do they look good? And then you can like fix things. So one thing I actually quickly want to fix on mine is I just want to make this leaf just slightly bigger. So I'm just going to go kind of around it. Like that. And then I'm going to erase the main other line. There. Okay. I guess we should start the painting because we have limited time. So I already have my watercolor paints beside me ready to go. I hope everyone else has theirs ready to go. And Okay, so how I'm gonna, there's a lot of different techniques. What I like to do is uh, whenever I'm starting painting, I like to do it kind of in layers. So we'll see how that works today because we're on limited time and with layers, you almost have to like wait um, for one to draw before you put the next detailing layer on top. But I think I can get two layers done in our times, so which is which is awesome, like it's great. So first I'm gonna just gonna take the water on my brush and just go over um, my first petal that I'm gonna paint. And this kind of, allows when you add the color to the paintbrush it allows it to kind of spread and um, give it that watercolor effect so i just kind of very lightly wet that you can kind of see the sheen of it i'm going to add a little bit more up here and the nice thing about this paper this watercolor paper is that it absorbs some of the water so it doesn't run around and come out of the lines. So I'm going to start with the yellow. I'm just using a bright yellow, um, but I'm using quite a lot of water with it. So it's not like vibrant. It's just going to be like very lightly toned yellow. And I'm just going to cover the whole leaf. So as you can see, the paint kind of runs and does its own thing. Okay, and then I'm going to do this petal, and it's just all just going to be yellow. If you want, if I think it'll save time if we wet it all first, and then do the color. But I already have a little bit of, you can see I already have a little bit of yellow on my brush, so it's adding it to And don't worry if the, if the yellow does uh go outside your lines that's the whole point of watercolor that i like it kind of gives it that less like kind of more free look i don't know if that makes sense so now i'm starting to add in um the yellow to where i added the water
Okay, and that's pretty good for first layer. So now we have to wait for it to dry. Uh, and then while it's drying, we can paint the stem. And the stem is, is just green. So not too picky to use any type of green. I usually like to do my lighter colors first and then I'll do my darker colors on top. So just add the water first. I'm just doing it with the color now. And then you don't want your water from the stem to touch your petal because then it'll kind of, if the petal one is still wet, it's just gonna bleed into it. I mean, it kind of gives it a watercolor look when you do that, but I'm gonna, for today, I'm just gonna avoid that. And I used quite a bit of water. So another thing with, with um, watercolor is to have paper towel or like a sponge or something, and then you can just lightly, like don't press too hard, but if you go lightly like this, it just absorbs any excess water. And then you just go in with the color. And I use Sorry, everyone, we're having some technical difficulties again. Isabel, we've lost your audio again. Can you hear me? It can give you very vibrant colors. So it can, if you use the pure gel part, it will, it's almost like acrylic. It's very, very bright. But yeah, you can add more water or less and then it becomes more or less translucent. And so these are the colors I'm using today. Um, I just have red and yellow and I'm gonna mix, I already mixed some, but the red and yellow uh, I'm gonna mix to make orange because there's some parts that kind of will have orange, orangey shading. That's a bit too orange, but um, we'll go as, when I'm mixing the colors, I'll show you guys. And then this is the, this is a really dark green and this is this green I haven't, um, mixed yet, but it's going to do the more of the details. So this is, and the nice thing about these watercolor gel paints is that if they do dry up, well, they will, they will dry up if you don't use them all. But it, when they do, you just add water and they act as like dry watercolor. So you can literally use them until you use them all. Like they don't dry out and they're not a waste like acrylics. Okay, so it's kind of starting to dry. To speed up the process, I'm just gonna take the paper towel since we are kind of on a time limit. I'm gonna take the paper towel and just very lightly blot, just so we could do the detail there because that one takes a bit longer than just coloring it. And this paper towel has like little lines in it, so it's kind of leaving that, but it kind of gives it a cool effect. And then, yeah, you don't want to use the same side that you dab the yellow with the green because then it may mix. So now I'm going to do the details. And for the details, you don't want to use as much water as when you were um, doing the full color because it'll, it, you'll have less control of the colors. So I'm going to take, this is the yellow that I used uh, for the main petals. And I'm going to take a little, I made this orange earlier with the red and the, and the yellow. I'm going to take a little bit of that orange and mix it with the yellow until I like the color. And then 
sometimes when it's like a little bit too vibrant, you can add brown and then brown kind of tones it down. And then if you ever want it, I just lighten it just a tiny bit. I just kind of play around with the colors until I like it. So that's kind of the color I'm looking for. Yeah, that's the color. So that's the one I'm gonna use for the details. You can use your paper towel to like lightly get any of the excess water. Sometimes when you have like water up here, it can like drip down while you're painting. So some brushes hold the water better than the other, than others. So I'm gonna, on the yellow flag iris, the signal patches are a bit more darker. So I'm just gonna go over and do that first. And I'm gonna go a bit beyond this line. And I'll, you'll see in a bit why. So I'll, sh I'll give you the reference photo that I'm kind of working off that I did yesterday. Um, it kind of has these like the, li the line that we drew on the yellow flag iris. That line is this line and it's going to have, it has more of these like um, dots and lines and then the darker part kind of extends beyond that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make some lines coming off from there. And then I'm also gonna use that color to, that's a bit too brown, to color the sides that are folded. And add a little bit of that darkness above here. And then a little bit of a lighter tone of that on the edges. Isabel, I'm just curious, how long did it take you to finish the original painting that you just showed us of the yellow flag iris? Um, I did it in like two evenings because the first evening I drew it and then the, and then I drew it and I was like figuring out, um, I was like actually reading a lot about yellow flag iris to like, so that I could explain it because the terminology is like the, I feel like that kind of helps a lot with knowing what you're painting. But yeah, I kind of, I looked at a lot of different photos just so I can get figure out which is the best one to use. Cause when you look at photos of yellow flag iris, they, there's so many different angles. And so I wanted to figure out the most easiest angle for everyone to draw. So that, that was this one that I found. And then um, last night I just did, um, and then that first night I also painted it just that first layer. And then last night I did all the details and the fine lining. And so I would say, I don't know, maybe like, maybe it took me like four hours. That's great. I know when I'm trying to draw something, I, I look at the image or what's in front of me and I try to break it down into simple shapes. So I really liked how you um, gave us the example of drawing the heart to start. Yeah, I find that helps a lot with uh, like keeping, like having some kind of guideline so that's, yeah. 
And then I see with your watercolor um, paints. I guess I have a couple minutes left. Yeah. I see with your watercolor paints, are those ones, obviously those are in a tube, right? Yeah. So I guess the advantage of using watercolors that come in a tube versus like you can get the pucks with the pucks, it'd be more difficult. You can't really mix the colors. So is that why you're using those um, watercolors? You can actually, or do those watercolors have like a better pigment? Yeah, I like, I just, my friend gave me these like six or seven years ago because she didn't like them. And so I just was like, oh, I'll use them when I was like trying to get back into watercolor. Cause I like, I tried the pencil crayon thing that you were talking about. Um, where you just add the water and then I also tried the the pox and then I tried this and I was like oh you can like mix the colors nicely but once they dry because like I have like a board at home and I just have them all on the board and then um, once they dry up they kind of act like the pox anyways and you can still mix them pretty easily I just kind of um, you just add water to them and they just um, they'll release their pigment again but yeah it is it, they are nice. They're kind of daunting to work with at first, but I like them. So yeah, that's, that's great to know that you can still use that paint after it's dried up because acrylics, once, if you leave it out and it's dried, it's, it's done. <laughs> yeah, and you always like, put too much of one color and then it feels wasteful. Yeah. So I'm just doing, I'm just adding the green details to the stem. And then one last thing, I think I have like one minute left, which isn't very much, but one thing I think that will like take it up a notch is if you use a really dark color, I'm just gonna use brown because I didn't um, put any black on here, um, is making the veins, which will give it more of that look. So the veins, they all kind of fan out like this and they go right to the edge. And I'm kind of, if you notice, I'm starting a bit outside of this signal patch. And then sometimes I'm adding like, um, I don't know what to call this, like a V or like a fork, I don't know. And then sometimes I'm not. And then you can do the same thing here. You can make some lines thicker, some thinner. And then some you can just do like this at the end. If anyone has a question for Isabel, you can pop it into the chat window. If you don't have the chat window open, if you um, move your cursor over the bottom of the screen, you can click on chat, or you can also click on Q&A and pop your question in that box as well. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys noticed, but that those veins, I feel like, I, I don't know, whenever I do veins and like detail lines like that, I think it really takes it to the next level. And then I'm just going to quickly do the dots. It's still a little wet, so it might bleed, but I'm just going to do dots along this line that we drew. And then you can make a few of them a little bit irregular, like that. I thought that I was going to have so much time. <laughs> I never realized how long, I never really time myself when I paint. So I feel like I kind of lose track of time. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of shadow back here and I think that's gonna give it more of a finished look. And a little bit of shadows there.
if anyone that's participating would like to share their drawing and their painting, if you just want to pop that into the chat and then Brittany, who is doing our ISCBC technical support, she can actually promote you to a panelist and you can come on camera and show us your painting. And don't be shy because art is different for everyone. Yeah. One and it's <laughs> like I'm I'm not a professional artist, but I love creating art and I think everyone should feel that their art is, you know, perfect just the way it is. I'm really curious. So I hope somebody So I'm just adding more details and layers. And even if you uh, just created a drawing, you can also share that. Like if you didn't do any painting, don't feel like you can't just share a drawing as well. Now, Isabel, if you were wanting to draw a different type of iris, could you use the same type of shape, just change up the colors? Yeah, like generally, yes. I mean, there's always like a few things about um, proportions, but generally, yes. Like you could use these tips to draw most irises. Some of them have like a bit more to them. Some of them are more simpler, but yeah, definitely like look at a few photos of what you want to draw. Get like a few different angles of them. That always helps to see because then you like realize that it's just like not one dimensional, it's not just the photo. And then it kind of gives you a better idea of how you can play around with like how you can move the leaves. So yeah, definitely you can use this as a guide. Perfect. I see uh, Shauna Lehman wants to share. Oh, beautiful. So we can just- Oh wow, uh, that's so good. Awesome. That looks mm -hmm. awesome. Good job. And Kate. Oops. Did you use watercolor, Shauna? Yeah. Be able to. I mean, yeah. yeah. It looks great. Yeah, I used watercolor. That was so much fun. Thank you. So I can see, oh, that's awesome. I can see Kate's uh, video is on. And if you- Caitlin, I'm just going to stop the spotlight. Perfect. Um, and bring it over to gallery view so we can see everybody. Yeah, let's Perfect. do that. And Sharon Dowling would like to share as well. That's great. Wow, Kate, that's so nice. I love it. Those oh, are, this is great. <laughs> oh, these are so beautiful. Those are awesome. Good job, guys. I love that you're also outside. Yeah. <laughs> it's fabulous. <laughs> and Sharon, I just sent you a request to share a video, okay. so you should be able to. Oh, awesome. Oh, that's so great. Oh wow. oh, wow. I love it. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> These Good are job. amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. Good job. I, yeah, I should have done one and shared it so that the new artist know, would feel okay with sharing because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. Yeah, oh. I'm really I'm feeling inspired to start using watercolors. I'm always afraid of them. So now I'm like, oh, I got to like get out my watercolors and look at some of my plant photography and start creating. So this is great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's good. I'm glad people are inspired to try watercolors and to try different techniques. And yeah, if you could draw this, like you guys are awesome. All the ones that I saw are amazing. And if you guys could draw this, you can tackle a lot of different other flower species. Like I feel like yellow flag irises are more difficult because they're just so, they're kind of odd looking when you actually look at the petals and how they um, sit and how the structure of them. So that's awesome, guys. 
We have a few more people who want to share. Yeah, I'm excited to see. Awesome. Okay, I didn't have any watercolors, so mine is strictly pencil and shading. <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. Oh, that's so good, Serena. That's great. But I searched, I had to, I dipped out for like five minutes because I was searching my house for pencil crayons or like anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to go out and purchase them so I can complete this properly. That's awesome. That's so Thank awesome. you for sharing. And... And I see Amanda's Amanda. here. Amanda, do you want to share yours? Yeah. Lexi's okay. going to. Okay, I'm going to try oh, this. I love it. This. Yeah. Kind of wow. see it. <laughs> wow. That looks beautiful. So beautiful. It's, it's so neat. Really, I love it. It's really wet, but I'm going to have to do a little bit more detailing. But I'm very happy I got my watercolors out for this. <laughs> It's, it's really neat to see how everybody's putting their own spin on this as well. Lexi, like that's it's beautiful still... too. Oh, that's so nice. Yours is vibrant. Oh, you're just on mute, Lexi. Sorry, I used there watercolor pencils. Oh, oh okay, wow. cool. That's great oh, to see, see it, it done by the. Yeah, could you show us again? Oh. Wow, beautiful. Oh, that looks awesome. Very oh, nice. nice. And so is that pencils. Arnica with us? And I did like a <laughs> palette. Nice. Cool. Nice. I love it. Awesome. So cool. So the watercolor pencils, you just shade it and then you add water to them after? Is that? Mm -hmm. It looks good. There's a couple of different techniques. You can do that way or you could just color it in with the pencil and then put water over. But I thought I'd have more control this way. Oh, awesome. Depends on what watercolors you're using too. But yeah, I've done that before and it's really fun. Wow. Those are, those are really good. You guys are awesome. Karen, would you like to share? Sure. And I just wanted to say thanks for the family event. Hey, Arnica. <laughs> This is her aunt from Victoria. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Wow. Oh, wow. Ooh, that's awesome. They're all so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to go and paint. I kind, of, I kind of want everyone to like send a photo in and make a collage of all of them. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, if everyone's okay with it, if you hold your photos up, um, I'll take a quick screenshot of everybody. You should sign it. Like sign your name beside yeah. it. It's so nice. Everyone sign your name first. We know who it is. All right. Oh, great here. <laughs> this is great. so cool. <laughs> it's very, very cool. That's awesome. Hey, thanks for for you to hold oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. I got a couple good shots there. Okay. Cool. Well, thanks everyone for sharing. Thank you. I just want to yeah, thank you so much, Isabel. Yeah, thanks for joining. I'm glad that everyone like learned something and got their I art, black beans. you know, artistic black beans. Um, okay. urges out. I don't know. <laughs> But it's good just to do art every once in a while and just, yeah, so that's really great. Awesome. And on behalf of the whole um, Invasive Species Council of BC, Isabel, thank you so much for this great workshop. I know uh, we all enjoyed it and I'm sure anyone who watches the recording is also going to really enjoy the workshop as well. Uh, just so all the participants know, we'll be sending out a short uh, link to an evaluation survey. If you could please fill it out so we can get your feedback and also there's a spot on there for you to put any ideas in for future workshops. 
I also want to mention that if um, you are, if you know of anyone that's between the ages of 15 to 30, we are in, uh, inviting youth to join our Invasive Species Council of BC Youth Volunteer Program. Um, Amanda, who is on here now, she is one of our uh, youth volunteers and she's actually been creating uh, invasive species art for the past few months and helping us out at the council, which is great. So not only do we have volunteers creating invasive species art, we also um, have volunteers helping us with social media, environmental stewardship, and anything else they're interested in that helps them uh, make an impact in their community. So to join our volunteer program, you can visit our website at bcinvasives.ca. And you can also check out our website to see our exciting um, upcoming events and workshops. We actually have a workshop coming up in July that's all about um, how to create a plant press so you can create your own herbarium. So just again, a big thank you to Isabel and thank you so much for um, everyone that joined us tonight and uh, we hope to see you next time. Bye everyone, thanks for joining. Thanks so much. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you, bye.